Hello everyone, my name is Sadia Patti and I'm counsel in the International Arbitration Group of Gilles Gladwell in London. Uh, prior to working in London, I was also working in Paris and in uh, New York in uh, international arbitration groups of other law firms. Um, and I'm delighted and honored to have been invited by Harris Paul from the Bali International Arbitration Center to give my views um, and more specifically my number one career advice uh, for aspiring arbitration practitioners. So what is my number one career advice? Well, um, I would say never stop learning. I know it sounds like a basic advice, but um, it's an important one, I do think, and also for um, lawyers or non-lawyers of all generations. So this is for you law students, uh, aspiring uh, lawyers, but also junior practitioners and more seasoned practitioners. Um, and um, it's an important advice that I follow every day. Um, now, why am I giving you this advice? Because um, it is a realization also that you as a person, uh, whether you're a student or a young practitioner or a more experienced practitioner, um, you're only, and to take um, the words of Carol Sagan, um, a pale blue dot in the universe of arbitration, right? Um, and so it doesn't mean that you cannot make an impact into this world, uh, but I do think, and I'll come back to the impact point at the end, um, that you never Never have to you you never stop learning in your whole career um, you have to build your career on in on, on an ongoing basis and so if you picture the universe of arbitration you have to learn from your immediate environment but also from your outside environment which nonetheless is connected to the arbitration world well let me break it down a little bit for you so your immediate environment and when you when i say never stop learning maybe you're thinking about okay i need to learn from cases i need to learn from books uh, from articles i need to get a double qualification so, um, you know, in civil law or and common law, for example, yes, these are all important and valid points. But more importantly, I think you should visualize the environment that you are in and the different actors that you can learn from. So in the immediate um, arbitration world, I would say um, they are different kinds of actors. And I think they're all extremely important people that we need to learn from. The first ones being being, of course, your own uh, peers. So uh, whether you're in a law school right now or in a law firm, the people surrounding you, uh, your teachers, your um, the partners, the senior associates you're working with, um, or if you're a more seasoned practitioner, the younger generation that you are working with. It are, every meeting, every assignment um, is a learning opportunity. Um, and so, you know, make your everyday environment a learning opportunity in that sense. Um, so I would say learn from your inside environment first right um, and the different actors in the arbitration world are there are several they're not just the legal practitioners or the academics uh, we tend to forget uh, very important actors such as um, our technic uh, technical experts that we work with hand in hand who we can learn from and we work with um, and, and we need to understand how they work how they communicate um, in, in a case right so we need to be able to learn from that not just when a case arises but I think develop those meetings develop those relationships from early on um, there are also new kinds of actors on the scene now which are third-party funders I, I think they're also important people we need to learn from they're the one financing cases so you need to understand how if you're in the process of doing business development or getting cases from your firms how can you fund a case how can you convince them how does their um, business business model work, right? And also, of course, um, and uh, not unimportantly, you need to learn from your clients. Uh, what do they want? What are they looking for? Uh, what is their problem? Um, right? And so this is a transition uh, to explain that you need to learn from your outside 
um, environment of arbitration. It's very important, of course, to learn from arbitration practitioners and to be an excellent expert in the field, but I think it is non, um, no less important to understand the industry that you are representing. So um, different sectors like the industry sector, you need to learn from and understand how those um, uh, you know, oil and gas companies work. And for that, you need to get outside of the arbitration world a little bit. So I would recommend attending more sectorial focused uh, conferences and read some specific um, sector focused, industry focused um, journals. Um, and you know, there's thousands of means of getting information nowadays. It could be online, it could be written, it could be oral. Um, you know, there's separate ways of, of understanding things, but you need to understand that at the end of the day, an arbitration practitioner is just a service provider. So we are here um, responding to our client's need. And yes, of course, we need to master the law of arbitration and uh, be excellent lawyers. But I think you can, there's a difference between um, a good lawyer and an excellent dispute resolution practitioner is if you understand the business, you understand what your client wants and their need. Um, going to arbitration may not be um, the best option for your your client um, and similarly the way you quantify damages and what you're looking for may not be exactly what the business needs right now um, so for that you need to keep on learning by stepping outside of the world of arbitration and understanding what the business needs are so here are very quickly my uh, number one career tip advice never stop learning thank you very much